For the German people, the new year brought changes that were spectacular, dramatic and unbelievable. After 30 years, they were no longer divided by a wall of concrete and political ideology. The reunification of Germany, only a year earlier an impossible dream, was now a reality. But as the Berlin crowds reveled in a welter of euphoria, on the horizon loomed the spectre of big changes for the British forces, soon to be stationed in a sovereign, united Germany. Two and a half years ago, few realised just how much the British community would be affected. There had been talk of some reduction in the number of British troops based in Germany, but few commentators were brave enough to predict those cuts would be so big, more than 50%, that, like the forces of the Warsaw Pact, the British Army of the Rhine would eventually disappear, to be replaced by a much smaller Allied Rapid Reaction Force. As for the reaction of the German people to the drawdown of British troops, there are two very different opinions on that. The occupying forces, or the Allied forces, as you might call them, have, in the minds of most Germans, I think, now become completely irrelevant. The Germans are preoccupied with their own ideas, they are inward-looking. They, I think, the majority of those who were born after the war never quite understood the purpose of the Allied forces. And uh, this is now no longer, they are no longer regarded as, as necessary. Uh, they're regarded as totally superfluous, and their withdrawal is, in fact, secretly applauded, I think, by most Germans. They would like these troops to stay, the British, the Americans, chiefly, these two. There are some French contingents. For a simple reason. The threat has gone. The Soviet Union has diminished. The Warsaw Pact has crumbled. But people argue, rightly so, I believe, that uh, we don't know what is going to happen in future. We don't know what is going to happen in other trouble spots of the world. So they are glad that at least some of these troops do stay and that they combine together in defense efforts of the Western community, of NATO chiefly. But whatever the true sentiments of the German community, the drawdown is a reality both sides must accept. Official reunification was still several days away when the first British unit lost its role. The Army Air Corps, in their helicopters, would no longer be needed to patrol the 700 miles of border fencing separating two Germanys. Equally easy to predict was the end of the line for the Berliner, the British military train. For more than 40 years, it played a major role in maintaining the British forces' right of access between the West and Berlin. The eight luxury coaches of the Berliner, hauled ironically by an aging Russian locomotive, was once the target for close scrutiny by both Russian and British forces, anxious to prevent East Germans from stealing a ride to the West and causing a diplomatic row in the process. British armed guards patrolled the corridor of each coach. Doors were firmly locked and chained. And trackside views of what was East Germany were forbidden territory to cameramen. Germany had been unified for four months before the redundant train made its last trip. Now most of it's been handed over to museums. German reunification had immediate effects on the British forces and their families. Some good, some not so good. On the plus side, there was the refreshing freedom to travel into and around Honecker's East Germany, especially into East Berlin, for so long barred to them. But families didn't have to travel all the way to Berlin to view those who so recently had been the enemy. Reporter Rob Olver joined one of the first British couples who just popped over the border for a shopping trip to the east. A September morning at Northampton Barracks, Wolfenbüttel. Sergeant Fred Tyler and his wife Connie are off to East Germany. This time last year, such a trip would have been inconceivable. But since March, even British soldiers have been free to travel there. As soon as we found out about it from our neighbours and the rest of it, um, we just sort of got in the car and came across more curiosity than anything else. 
Today, the hour-long journey has brought Fred and Connie to the town of Halberstadt. As a, as a sort of a Westerner, you tend to think that the East is very cold and, um, and sort of you, you can't get in there, the wall, basically. But um, now it's all open, you find that the people are exactly the same as the, the Western, um, West Germans. Uh, the economy is coming along quite well now, and the shops, just look around you, and uh, you can see more or less the same in the West. We were very happy for the East and West to join together, in fact. Um, and on the other hand, there, there was this uncertainty of what we were going to do next. The rumour is strong at the moment about um, cutting regiments in the rest of it, and obviously everybody fears their job. Uh, for instance, I've just bought a brand new car, so the last thing I want is somebody to turn around and say, well, we don't need you anymore. If the future looks uncertain for people like Fred, Connie believes many wives will welcome the prospect of returning home. I think most of them are looking forward to um, going back to the UK, as you say, mainly for job opportunities and also um, to be home, really, because you know, quite a few have been over here so long and you know, they're just looking forward to having the children settled and going back home. But Connie Tyler's optimism of jobs just waiting for those service families returning to Britain, voiced two and a half years ago, illustrate another dilemma created by reunification for the German community. For them, unemployment is now a major problem, and the withdrawal of British troops will only add to it. Many garrisons employ large numbers of German civilians. In many towns, 80% of the local economy depends on the British Army. If the soldiers go, so too will the jobs. Well, as for the effect of that, again, there are differing views. The situation has changed dramatically. Unemployment is now something, again, Germans are used to on a large scale. There are going to be three million unemployed this year. The unemployment rate in the East, as we know, is rising and rising. So the number of people who would be unemployed by the Allied forces withdrawing is rather small in relation to the overall problems that the Germans are now facing. So I think that is also not something that is seen as very relevant by most Germans. There are probably some elements who were very happy to see the departure of quite large numbers of British soldiers because it means perhaps that the impact, particularly on the environment, is going to be less. But to take up your other point, equally, it has meant the loss of a large number of, point, uh, uh, of jobs and often in areas where there already is high employment, which of course is going to lead to or has already led to a certain amount of social tension and restlessness. And it is particularly unfortunate because many of those employers I am talking about have worked for us perhaps for over 20, in some cases over 30, or 40 years, and uh, therefore one has a certain obligation, and it is a, uh, one, it is a, a situation that one regrets, but nevertheless, it is all part of the progress of history as we are experiencing at this moment in this part of the world. Back in Berlin, reunification quickly brought one less than welcome phenomena to the British garrison, heavy traffic. There are now more cars in East Berlin than in the West, and most of them, it seems, travelling across the old border at the same time. True, there are still a few old Trabants to be seen, but most have been replaced by modern cars from the West. What would Lenin have thought about that? Or indeed, about another remarkable sight in the shadow of the now fully restored Brandenburg Gate. The foreign stallholders selling to British service families Russian Red Army hats, badges and uniform overcoats. British visitors don't have to journey far to see the horrendous problems 
facing those who would bring East Berlin up to the standards of the West. Two and a half years after reunification, and in sight of the Brandenburg Gate, and alongside a surviving section of the infamous wall, still lies the wreckage and debris of the former communist regime. A state of urban dereliction supporting claims voiced by Germans both in the East and West that reunification has been a big disappointment. The, well, slowness of unification. Here in the West, people say, well, unification, all right, and fine, but we are paying tremendous sums of money out of our own pockets, out of the pockets of Mr. and Mrs. Average German. In the East, the people are dissatisfied because they had believed that, well, almost this prosperity of the West will come overnight. Well, it is taking much, much longer than anyone would have thought then, for various reasons, it would take too long to explain them, but basically turning a communist state into a democratic state with market economy and so on. It's a very, very long process and a very, very costly process, so there is disappointment, but many realize that, that there is no way out of this situation, that we have to just go through this. To many in the German community, reunification was the signal to campaign for the removal of not only British, but all foreign troops from German soil. In October 1990, German political commentators were predicting big changes to come. I think, don't think that there is a difference between British troops or other foreign troops in Germany. So you can't say uh, the, there's a special opposition against uh, British troops. There is a general opposition of the uh, population against troops, even German troops. But the unified Germany has since agreed to provide a home for the new Allied Rapid Reaction Force, led by Britain. Now Germany is hosting the forces of not just three foreign armies, but 13 of them. And not everyone is happy about that. As I think most Germans have not quite gathered what is happening here with this rapid reaction force. And I think most would resent it, just as they don't understand, for instance, Britain's involvement in, in, in conflicts like the Gulf War and so on. Most Germans do not understand that there is a need, perhaps for Germany as well, to take a more active role in pacifying international conflicts and so on. Uh, like Yugoslavia, they do not understand why they should get involved. And I think this is, again, part of this confusion which reigns. The government says on the one hand, Count Chancellor Kohl says, we can't continue to isolate ourselves from international conflicts. On the other hand, we've got this constitution that we can't really do much about combat, a combat role and so on. They are really, at the moment, terribly confused about their own role. And one day, that problem will have to, to sort itself out in a natural way and uh, if the government assumes a more assertive role in international politics, including military, I think this will not go down very well with voters. Another problem facing politicians of the new unified Germany is the thorny question of military training over large areas of the countryside. For more than 40 years, the British and their NATO allies frequently staged large-scale exercises, vast war games played out as near as possible to the real thing. In the 80s, the exercises became the target of opposition from the increasingly powerful environmental lobby. With the ending of the Cold War and the disappearance of the Russian threat, that opposition grew in intensity, reaching a climatic demand for all military training to be abolished. There are differing views on that. I think Germans outright reject them, whether it's the Americans or, or the British. And uh, I think the German government has perhaps not gone as far as most people would have liked in uh, scaling back these exercises. And in fact, what the Bundeswehr is trying to do now in Eastern Germany is also very much resented taking over the Soviet bases and having great uh, big exercise areas in their place. 
this is, I think, going to be the new problem. The Western Allies are withdrawing. People in these towns and cities where the Western Allies were are finally breathing a sigh of relief and saying, at last, we don't have this noise anymore. And things are becoming peaceful and happy. But in the East, I think a new problem is arising with the Russian, with the Russian withdrawal. The number has been reduced, the number of troops, and uh, uh, parallel with it, the number of, of training uh, uh, grounds. The remaining ones, uh, well, of course, there are always people in the direct vicinity who complain about it, but it is, it is not really in a sense that you could say uh, that one should worry about it. It's no less and no more than it has been 20 years before. But people do realize also where there are troops, they must train. So there must be training grounds, and they are being accepted by a vast majority, I would say. Two predictions made on the eve of reunification have, for the British forces and their families, sadly come true. West German landlords were given big government grants to house refugees from the east. The result? Private accommodation is now very scarce and inevitably very expensive. In some areas, rents are reported to have doubled. And, as forecast, up too has gone the price of another long-established British forces perk, a good quality second-hand German car. They've been snapped up by former East Germans, only too anxious to get rid of their old Trabants. Fears that another British bonus duty-free shopping in the NAFI might disappear, have not materialised. But the rumours persist, despite official denials. Meanwhile, the drawdown goes on. Within the next month, many more British servicemen and their families based in Germany will be earmarked for early departure back to Britain. The spectre of redundancy is no stranger to the British soldier. Many will take back with them memories of a very different Germany to the one they leave. To the days of the Cold War, when there was not one Germany, but two, divided by a wall of political ideology. When shopping trips to the East were an impossible dream. When negotiating the border meant tackling the bureaucratic minefield of Checkpoint Charlie. To the days when there was only one potential threat, the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact. Both now relegated to the pages of post-war history. A mainstay of Western defense for more than 40 years, the British Army of the Rhine will shortly join them in the history books to be replaced by the Allied Rapid Reaction Force. The British soldiers who remain in Germany will have to accept a very different role to that of the past. We have to remember on the British side, on the Allied side, if you like, that circumstances have changed in Germany and we are here very much as equal partners. And in other words, if we want to maintain those good relations with the German side, we must take their interests much more into account than perhaps we have done in the past. They say the Russian bear is gone, but will it be back is another question. They reflect also on the reason why these troops have been here. Let's not forget they have been occupation forces, then they have been friendly forces here in the context of NATO, and they should stay here. Who knows what will come in future, so better be on the safe side and be prepared. I think the Germans are a bit confused about what they are now, about their identity. I saw uh, there was an anti-racist demonstration in Magdeburg the other day, and I saw to my astonishment, and I think this is very indicative of the mood at the moment, that this demonstration was not only against racism against foreigners, but it was at the same time against the Allied bombing of Magdeburg in 1945. Um, now, how you can mix up those two things, to me, is incomprehensible, but the Germans do, and this shows me that they are not quite clear about their history and about their present role. 
Well, just how the Germans solved the tremendous difficulties and problems created by reunification, that's a matter of conjecture. Of course, many British troops and their families have already left Germany. Many more are still to go. And for those that remain, well, life will never quite be the same ever again.